strategic information group and Dr. Maria Laherta. Um, so as we know, ICAP works with a lot of HIV work in lower income countries. So this was in a lower income country, it was in Zambia. And we looked at three key populations who have higher risk for HIV acquisition, uh, men who have sex with men, transgender women, and people who inject drugs. So it is a bit hard for us to know in a setting like Zambia how big these populations are and the prevalence and incidence of HIV and other um, STIs and whatnot in these populations and how their behaviors impact HIV acquisition. So our study aimed to calculate the size of these populations as well as get more information on behavioral outcomes and HIV prevalence in these populations. So the way that we did that was to calculate the um, population size. We did a three source capture recapture method. So that was when um, we approached members of each key population and gave them a marker of sorts to denote that we have talked to them. In our case, they were little bracelets and three different times researchers would go out and see how many people had bracelets, see if they could get anyone else from these populations to give them a second bracelet and to kind of triangulate the size of these populations. And then um, on the second part of the project, we did a biobehavioral survey in which we recruited members of each population and gave them coupons after each survey to allow them to recruit their peers and then gave each one, each person who came in for a survey, their three coupons so that we could get more of a, a branching effect to try and get as many people in these populations as possible to participate in our surveys. So if we look at figure one up here on the top, that is a recruitment tree of uh, men who have sex with men and transgender women. So you can see based on the colors of the dots, whether they're HIV positive or negative, and how many people recruited, however many people to participate in the survey. So say this person recruited two people, this person recruited three, and so on. Um, I also helped calculate the population size for MSM and transgender women. And you can see that in this graph here that was using a software called RDS Analyst, which I think is an attachment to Stata perhaps. Um, and my part of the my contributions included doing this data analysis and also piloting uh, these surveys that were given to the populations in the field to make sure that all the skip patterns worked and the interviewers wouldn't have any problems technically with um, conducting these surveys. So I learned a lot in this practicum and I'm really glad for the experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, um, Amanda, do you wanna go? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen again. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Amanda, and my practicum is to build an alumni tracking database analytics package in the One House network. Uh, so a little bit of background information. ICAP at Columbia University has partnered with UC Davis on the One House Workforce Project with the goal of uh, empowering the Southeast Asian One House University Network and the African One House University Network and their member universities to deliver and develop a sustainable training program that would equip their professionals with skills and competencies to um, address complex, complex health issues. So with that goal in mind, ICAP is responsible for supporting the technical aspect of the project. And my practicum project, which is to build an alumni tracking database analytics package, is one of them. This project was done 
under the supervision of Richard Mitchell, who is the Director of Informatics within the Strategic Information Unit. Uh, so basically the alumni tracking database was built upon a survey which uh, was used to interview the one house alumni about their experience in their respective program. The answers were stored in a CSV file and it was downloaded, analyzed and transformed into different visuals for review. Uh, I chose to use various descriptive formats, including pie charts, bar charts, line plots, tables, and etc. for representing multiple choice question results. And I also generated word clouds to analyze free response questions to, rep, uh, to present the most common themes and sentiments in the answers. The final results was, uh, were, were compiled into an exportable PDF document using R, and the source code was distributed into each um, One House University Network country teams so that they can generate their own reports uh, locally. And I also built another authenticated interactive dashboard using R Shiny for online access of the report. And here this figure shows the authentication page for the um, online access. So after the analysis, we discover that the majority of African alumni pre, uh, participated in pre-service training before employment, but the most of Seohun alumni engaged in in-service training during employment. Most of them received a bachelor degree upon graduation, um, and most of them find the courses helped a great deal with their further studies, career, personal, or social responsibilities. After graduation, a lot of the participants also engaged in health and educational related jobs, which can be represented uh, at the word cloud here. For example, a lot of them uh, continued their career as science teacher at educational board, university lecturers, registered nurses, medical and health of officers. And all of them had positive attitudes regarding the knowledge and training they obtained through these universities. Uh, at last, uh, a question that we're interested in is how alumni would contribute to Ohun. Uh, basically, the per, uh, based on the answer, the participants are willing to contribute through different ways, with the largest proportion willing to join the One House faculty and instructional team. So as a conclusion, we found the analysis of the survey results really uh, useful regarding providing the information about the whereabouts of the One House alumni and the questions regarding the course design and skills provided uh, useful ideas and points out how we can uh, improve the course contents and structures. The use of our program to create the analytics package offers great flexibility and accessibility for a different local uh, generation of the reports and online uh, access through uh, to the reports. And um, I'm really thankful for this experience to, for me to apply the knowledge and skills I have learned into um, real, world, real world applications. And I really enjoyed this experience. Thank you guys very much for listening. I think you're muted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. So thank you, Amanda. I'll hand it over to Lindsay. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, my name is Lindsay, uh, and I worked with the iPrep study um, as a next gen intern over the summer and also into the fall as well. Um, my I did qualitative data analysis um, and my mentors were Joanne Mintel and um, Julie Frank. Um, so this presentation is focused on prep attitudes among female sex workers and male clients in Kisubu, Kenya. Um, so a little context uh, around the study, uh, ICAP conducted formative research um, to inform the design and implementation of combination prevention interventions. Um, focusing on pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP uh, for female sex workers and their male clients. Um, 
And some of the questions that I started with um, for that guided this data analysis um, were related to um, how PrEP um, was positioned among female sex workers and male clients compared to other strategies uh, for prevention and um, how PrEP-related knowledge, attitudes, and practices um, converged and diverged uh, throughout uh, these groups. So um, I used thematic analysis in an iterative process, um, generating codes and themes. And you can see this process a little better in figure one. Um, I also used Deduce to develop a code book with feedback uh, from weekly meetings with my mentors. Um, and I also wrote summaries of those transcripts to share with my mentors as well. Um, so some of the results that we can see um, from this analysis, um, I categorized um, the shared prep attitudes into kind of two categories, either po positive prep attitudes and negative prep attitudes. I also included um, this other um, group of, of shared themes uh, that didn't fit into those two categories um, over here in figure four. So just looking at some of the shared attitudes um, between female sex workers and male clients, you can see that um, there were many shared um, positive uh, PrEP attitudes, um, including um, PrEP's use for HIV uh, prevention um, and the benefits of PrEP, as well as seeing um, PrEP as an alternate to condom use. And some of the negatives uh, include um, PrEP adherence um, as it being a, a daily pill and PrEP confusion with PEP. Um, and then the primary unique theme um, among male clients was the fear that PrEP could expose their infidelity uh, to their main partners. Um, and um, we see that there were more um, unique themes uh, among female sex workers, including violence against uh, female sex workers, experiences of stigma, solidarity and support among female sex workers, and um, this idea of disclosing their uh, participation in sex work to others, um, whether that be family or friends um, or just people in the general community. And so the, con um, the conclusions that um, we were able to come to um, from this analysis where um, that there were many shared positive attitudes um, and uh, there is an opportunity to bridge gaps in HIV prevention services um, as well as uh, the shared negative attitudes um, highlight a need to promote condom, new, condom use to prevent other outcomes like STI or unwanted pregnancy. Um, and this process allowed me to learn very quickly and flexibly in collaboration with my mentors. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to have worked um, with Joanne and Julie on this project. And I learned a lot about qualitative data analysis. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, now I will share my screen and we have two videos from two other students. Hi everyone, my name is Rochelle and I'm a second year MPH student for public health. I'm in the Department of Health Policy and Management and I'm completing my certificate in applied biostatistics and public health data science. Um, this past summer, I completed my practicum at ICAP as part of their next generation internship program. Um, I worked under the mentorship of the data management and informatics lead and the strategic information director. Um, in my role, I worked on the FIA survey in Mozambique, which was called INCIDA, and my work was focused on survey monitoring and the return of HIV results to participants. Um, so for a little bit of background, FIA stands for Population-Based HIV Impact Assessment, and the FIA um, survey 
um, in Mozambique is called INCIDA. Um, the overall goal of this cross-sectional survey is to assess the prevalence and incidence of HIV in the Mozambican population, um, as well as the effectiveness of response efforts in reaching HIV epidemic control. Um, so INCIDA surveys eligible participants on preventative HIV care and treatment and offers HIV counseling, testing, and return of HIV results. Um, project data were collected via household questionnaires and household and laboratory-based tests. Um, so questionnaires collected demographic information and HIV-related risk factor information, um, and blood draws were conducted in the household for rapid HIV testing and counseling. Um, all blood samples were then transported to laboratory facilities for further processing and testing. Um, so population-based surveys um, measuring HIV prevalence and incidence similar to FIA haven't historically disclosed HIV status or biomarker test results to survey participants. Um, and FIA and CETA rigorously prioritize detailed survey monitoring and return of HIV results to participants. Um, so through my practicum, I was involved in this survey monitoring process and assisted with the return of results and active linkage to care. Um, so some of the NCEDA survey monitoring reports that I assisted with included reports to identify survey participants with outstanding test orders, um, review sample quality, and process samples requiring reorders or household revisits. Um, I also assisted with the return of results and active linkage to care, or ALTC. Um, so this involved utilizing SAS to merge data sets from household questionnaires or household tests um, and laboratory-based tests and facilitating the return of results with in-country staff. Um, as seen in figure two, I also created a weekly ALTC report, which summarized participants who are eligible for ALTC um, that also consented to ALTC, and this was organized by province. Um, so overall, my practicum with ICAP allowed me to apply my learning from the classroom um, to public health research. I was really lucky to observe firsthand the precision needed for data management in a large scale population level survey and the importance of collaboration with various stakeholders. Um, I gained a lot of skills in SAS statistical programming and learned how to effectively communicate with the global research team. Um, so overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my practicum experience with ICAP, and I want to thank my mentors for their guidance, as well as the FIA analytics team for their support. Um, so thank you for allowing me to share. Okay, we have one other presentation. Hi everyone. I apologize for not being able to be there in person, but I hope you are all enjoying the poster session so far. My name is Allie Bronson. I'm a second year MPH student in sociomedical sciences with a certificate in global health. Um, so for my practicum experience, I was supporting some of the activities of Andrea Howard for a project titled um, SARS-CoV-0 Prevalence and the Impact of COVID-19 Among People Living with HIV in Kenya. So to start with a little background, Kenya has a high burden of HIV with roughly a prevalence of 4.2%. Um, and as we've seen, immunocompromised individuals have an increased risk of COVID-19 infection and the severity of infection. But also we've seen how uh, COVID-19 has impacted health systems. So this study is interested in how HIV and COVID-19 interacts um, both within the individuals, within um, their own risk to infection, but also at the health system level and how services may have been disrupted for HIV due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so unfortunately, I was unable to be involved for the life of this project. So if you're interested in more detail about its current progress, um, I would contact Andrew. And I am very grateful for my practicum experience and I feel very lucky to have played a role in the development and many of the startup activities for this project, from supporting the SOPs to testing the data management system. And so for this presentation, I can speak to the lessons that I learned from being involved in this study. Um, so through this practicum experience, I learned about the many different interest groups involved in this kind of work working with the funding institutions, with the health institutions, with the field teams, with the different agents that are involved in the different arms of the study from the laboratory side, 
um, to the uh, just local team, to so many different agents and people involved. And so because of all these moving pieces, this requires strong communication channels and strong relationship building in order to be successful. Also, there's the unique challenges that require the experience and familiarity with diverse environments, with the local context itself. So ranging from the different needs that might come up for the local IRB compared to the Columbia IRB, or also how to adapt to resource challenges, um, or even how to accommodate different language needs. So these are all things that had to be considered in order to be successful in this project. Um, and then finally, some of my biggest takeaways were just that um, with, with all the needs of this kind of study, with all the different moving pieces, with all the different objectives, organization is a crucial thing. Um, being able to accommodate the many relationships and the many elements for this ongoing research requires uh, the researching group to be very organized. But also a major lesson I learned is the importance of flexibility and recognizing that because of these many different variables, because this work takes time and collaboration takes time and reviewing and adapting takes time, being flexible is so important because even if you have these strong timelines and work plans that you've developed, there are always going to be barriers. There are always going to be factors that are going to change and shift your timelines. And so just being very flexible with your time and recognizing the need for flexibility is really crucial when you're working with so many elements. Um, so thank you so much for listening to this incredibly brief introduction to my practicum experience. Um, once again, I am very grateful to have had it. Um, to have been with ICAP and with Andrea. And um, if you have any questions about my experience, I am happy to be in contact with you. You can email me at anb2197 at cumc.columbia.edu. Thank you. Okay. It looks like we are potentially going to be kicked out of this session shortly, but if there are any questions or comments for the presenters, um, I open it up for a discussion. Um, I have a question for Amanda. Amanda, um, just in terms of working on the back end of this alumni tracking system, um, did you find that there were questions in the survey that you found were redundant or just, uh, you know, didn't sort of fit any box, if you will, in terms of the analysis that you were doing? And did you provide that feedback to your mentors on, you know, if you're doing the survey again, maybe you should consider dropping, you know, X, Y, and Z questions? Um, I think each country, uh, because we have Everhun and Siohun, uh, each of the sec, uh, each of the district has removed different questions regarding their availability and I think comfort, uh, the level of comfortness for their uh, participants. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to share my screen.